Howdy y'all, JTJ with Inkscape tutorial number three, the selection tool. Alright, once you've launched Inkscape, you can find the selection or the transform tool at the top of your toolbox on the left hand side of your screen. It's a black arrow, it looks very similar to your standard Windows mouse cursor. The quick key to select that is F1 or you can simply click on that. Now, first thing we're going to do is let's draw a couple squares by pressing F4 or selecting the square tool. Now I can draw a square by holding the control key and dragging them out. And draw a couple rectangles. Now, press F1 for the selection tool. Let's change the color. All right. So to select an object is very simple. You just left click on that object, it will select it. If you want to select more than one object, you can hold the shift key and click on them and then it will select more than one object. If you click off of an object onto the blank screen, it will deselect it. So selected, deselected. If you want to select multiple objects, and you don't want to shift click everything like there's a large group here you simply left click and hold and draw a box around it now all these objects are selected so when you select an object it has a bounding box and little black arrows appear around it those arrows if you click and hold them you can manipulate the size of that object And if you go to the corner, it will do height and width. Now let's select a few objects. Let's just go shift and select them all. You notice you still have the black arrows around it. I'm going to click, left click, hold, and drag it out. And it will manipulate all of the selected objects. If you don't like something that you've done, you can always deselect and control Z, which is undo. All right, so let's look up here. On the toolbar options, you have select all objects or nodes or control A. It's a very handy quick key. If you press control A, it will select all the objects that you're working on in this project. Anything that isn't locked or that is selectable will be selected. The next button over deals with stuff that's visible on the layers. If you haven't really working with layers, it'll work just the same as Control A. However, if you're working with layers that we'll cover in a later tutorial, it'll have some different functionality for you. The next button over is Deselect Selected Objects. Now we get into some manipulation. So if you want to rotate, you have a rotate counterclockwise rotate clockwise and you can click it multiple times if you had um, certain shapes it might do different things all right flip selected so I'm gonna let's turn this put it here shift click the other object I'm gonna go up to path and union so if we click this, it is actually flipping the object around. It's either flipped and selected vertically or horizontally. You can also use the V and H key to do that. Okay. And next we have these four commands. These are about lowering and raising your selections. So when you create something in Inkscape, the last thing that you created goes on top so if I was to draw a new shape right here on the middle it's going to be above these other shapes that I made so the way you can manipulate that or change that is you can use these controls to lower the selection down lower it to bottom is all the way lower selection one step so if you have select this and you want to lower it just one step down it'll go under one but not the other. If you want to raise it, 
and bring to the top. So if we want to bring this back up, there you go. Um, sometimes you want to hide things in Inkscape or you want to sort of filter things out or just raise it above something else so you can see it and work on it. And that's the way you do it. You can also use the page up and page down buttons on your keyboard to do that. The X and Y is the location of the object. So instead of moving it manually by clicking and holding, you can actually adjust this and move it where you want to on the X and Y coordinates. That can be handy if you're working on really complex objects and they need to be laid out correctly. You can also adjust the width and the height. You can type those in so you don't just have to rely on the arrows. Now the little lock is going to lock the proportions so if we have a square created which we have you can lock that and if I adjust one it will adjust the other as well. The next drop down is to change it the um, measurement so right now it is in millimeters you could change it to inches or pixels and I always suggest working in inches or pixels. The final four options which are all on at this point deal with scaling and moving objects. The first one is scale the stroke and width the same proportions. The next one is scaling rectangles, scale the radii of the rounded corners. So we talked in the last tutorial about how round how to round the corners of a square or rectangle. Now if you did not have this selected, that roundness would change as you scale it. Um, a very important one is move gradient along with the object. So we'll talk about gradients in a later tutorial, but just to sort of let you know what that does, if we ha don't have that option selected and I go to move this, it will not take the selection with it. So we move it back. And you can see how that could cause trouble. So we leave that on and it will move with it. And move pattern or fill along with it as well. So another important thing to realize is that I get a question, well how do I get rid of an object? Very simple, if you've done something you don't like, you can always press delete. You can also select an object, press the right mouse button and you'll get a set of options. You can undo, you can cut the object. If you right click again, you can paste the object. Right click, paste, and you can do that. Also, you could do control V. You can right click, duplicate the object, which will put an exact copy right over the top right click delete and then you have other object properties and fill such as the fill of the stroke and move layers and create links and set masks there you have it that's the selection transform tool thanks for watching please watch our next tutorial Inkscape tutorial number four the zoom tool